the narrative starts at the grand opening of an art exhibition. Following the event, the gallery's curator, Susan, is seen sitting by herself, looking downcast. She then returns to her lavish mansion. Susan struggles to sleep, so she spends the night watching television. The next morning, her butler informs her that she has received a package from the post office. Inside the package is a book authored by her ex-husband, Edward. The note accompanying the book mentions that Edward was motivated to write it after Susan's departure, and expresses his desire for her to be the initial reader before its official release in the spring. He also mentions his current location in Los Angeles and his wish to reunite with her after such a long time. Upon seeing the book's title, Nocturnal Animals, Susan's husband, Hutton, arrives. She inquires about his absence from the gallery the previous night. Hutton apologizes, explaining that he would be delayed for his dinner engagement if he had stopped by. Susan mentions that just 15 minutes of his time would have sufficed for her. She then inquires about his absence from bed last night, with his reason being that he didn't want to disturb her sleep. But Susan clarifies that she was awake throughout the night. She then proposes a weekend trip to the beach by herself, but Hutton declines, stating he has to return to the office and then travel back to New York. This confuses Susan, as he had just returned from there. Hutton explains that he must finalize a deal, which is the reason for his return. It becomes apparent that Hutton is struggling with his business, and the couple is facing financial difficulties. That evening, they go to a party at their friend's place. Susan's friend, Alicia, notices her distress and asks if she's okay, noting her lack of sleep and stress. Susan mentions that despite her riches and all the material possessions she has, she's still unable to discover true happiness within herself. She inquires about Alicia's secret to happiness, especially since she appears content with her married life, and Alicia reveals that her husband is gay, turning them into best friends and expressing her deep love for him, making her feel unique as the only woman in his life. Susan contrasts this with her experience with Hutton who never shared this kind of connection. Their conversation is interrupted by Hutton, who needs to depart for New York. Susan wishes him success in his business venture, aware of its importance to him. She then resorts to taking sleeping pills and begins to read the book Edward gave her, which bears her name on the dedication page. The story opens with a family traveling on the interstate towards Texas. Tony, the family's leader, is driving next to his wife, Laura. Their daughter, India, is upset because their cell service has stopped working, and Tony mentions that he enjoys the quiet of West Texas, which is why he doesn't mind the lack of cell service and people. A short while after, Two cars are moving very slowly in front of them, blocking their path. Tony honks his horn, and one of the cars moves aside, allowing him to pass. However, a few moments later, the other car speeds up and begins to bother them until it crashes into them from behind. This causes Tony to be forced off the road and trapped by the other cars. A man named Ray approaches Tony and questions him about why he crashed into their car. Tony suggests to Ray that they should report the incident to the authorities to resolve it, but one of the men claims Tony can't because he has a flat tire. Tony doubts their story, and Ray advises him to take the car for a spin to verify their claims. Tony attempts to drive, but is unable to do so due to the flat tire. Ray proposes to repair the tires as a gesture of goodwill to prove their integrity. Tony is left with no option but to exit the vehicle and open the trunk to retrieve the spare tire. Ray then instructs him to bring his wife and daughter along to help raise the car using a jack. Despite fear, the women have no other option but to comply. Ray begins to bother India, prompting Tony to intervene, but Ray retaliates by punching Tony. Tony decides to cease his efforts against Ray. They successfully repair the tires, and the women quickly get back into their car and make a call to Tony. Ray and the other man swiftly enter the vehicle and speed away. Tony is immobilized as he observes his wife and daughter being removed, and before he can respond, they are out of sight. Susan rapidly shuts the novel and takes a deep breath, unable to contain the tension of the plot. She dials her husband, who is at a hotel with a woman who is restraining his arm. Susan inquires about his silence after he arrived in New York, and he explains his reluctance to disturb her sleep. Returning to the book, Tony is left with one of the men named Lou, who commands him to drive. Tony is utterly distraught and searches frantically along the roadside for his wife and daughter. He spots his vehicle adjacent to a trailer with no occupants nearby, and Lou advises him to continue on, reassuring him that Ray won't harm his wife and child. He takes Tony to a secluded and abandoned area before abandoning him there. Tony makes his way along the roadside to the early hours until he stumbles upon a house and requests to use a phone. 
a police lieutenant, Bobby, inquires about Tony's situation, and they begin to retrace their steps that evening. Bobby is perplexed as to why Tony allowed the men to drive his wife and daughter away, especially without any weapons. They arrive at the barbed wire fence and proceed to cross it. Far from any settlement, Tony is immobilized when he discovers his wife and daughter deceased on a red couch. Susan is overcome with grief as she confronts the situation. She pauses her reading and recalls the moment she accidentally collided with her former spouse, Edward, in New York. Edward is in New York for an interview for a scholarship at Columbia University, while Susan is pursuing her graduate studies at the same institution. They dine together, during which Edward revealed that she was his initial crush. Upon Edward mentioning that Susan shares her eye color with her mother, Susan became upset, expressing her desire not to emulate her mother's ways. Edward inquired about her decision to not pursue a career in art, to which Susan responded that she finds the world too cynical. He then mentions that she often doesn't believe in her own abilities enough. Susan chuckles and inquires if he'd like to come back with her, revealing that he was her initial crush as well. Edward grins. Returning to the book, police officer Bobby informs Tony that they've determined the reason for his family's deaths. His wife suffered a broken skull, his daughter drowned and had a fractured arm, both victims of the crime. Bobby also mentioned that on the trailer where Tony discovered his car that evening, they discovered the prints of his wife and daughter, and they're currently investigating the owner of the trailer. Susan reminisces once more about the time she was having a meal with her mother. Her mother is upset because Susan plans to leave New York and return to Texas to be with Edward and get married. Her mother disapproves of Edward, viewing him as weak and not on their social standing. Susan attempts to protect Edward, but her mother warns her that she might later come to regret it, as Edward won't be able to afford her a comfortable life. She then reveals to Susan that she might not see it now, but she and her mother share more similarities than differences. Susan disagrees, claiming they are completely different, but her mother insists, just wait. Susan sends an email to Edward expressing her profound admiration for his book and her desire to meet him. Returning to the story, Tony gets an email from Bobby featuring a photo of their primary suspect, Turk. Tony verifies that Turk is indeed a suspect, but Bobby mentions that Turk has been missing. Weeks and months have gone by, and the investigation remains stagnant. It's noticeable that Tony has removed his beard. One day, Bobby encounters Tony and informs him about a robbery attempt at a supermarket. One of the men managed to escape, another was apprehended, and the third was fatally shot. The deceased individual is Turk. Bobby requests Tony to visit and see if he can identify the other person who has been apprehended. Upon arrival at the station, Tony instantly identifies the individual who turns out to be Lou, the individual who abandoned him in the desert. Lou attempts to claim ignorance of Tony, but Tony recalls their actions against him and his family that evening. Bobby inquires about Ray and Turk from Lou, who claims ignorance of them. Bobby escorts Lou to the detention center and informs Tony that he plans to prosecute Lou for murder, relying on his own account and and the fingerprints discovered in the car and the trailer. Bobby is convinced that Ray is the third person involved in the robbery who managed to escape and vows to Tony that he will locate him. Susan is in her office when her team informs her about her upcoming meeting, yet she appears distracted. The team inquires whether Susan hasn't slept again, to which she responds that she never does, which is why her former spouse referred to her as a nocturnal animal. Susan finds it odd that her former spouse sent her a book filled with violence and sadness, titled Nocturnal Animals, which he also wrote. The assistant questions whether Susan had feelings for her former spouse, to which Susan replies in the affirmative, but admits she lacked confidence in him and his literary abilities. She admits to committing a terrible act against her former spouse and leaving him for the charming and appealing Hutton. During the meeting, the board is deliberating on whether to terminate a specific employee. Susan expresses her disapproval, arguing that they should back the employee because they were the ones who employed Herpfjar. A board member points out to Susan that she was the one advocating for changes within the company, and Susan responds that sometimes it's not wise to alter things as they were, potentially hinting at her remorse over the changes she has made in her personal life. Returning to the story, Bobby takes Tony to the residence where Ray is present. Bobby mentions that Ray has no fingerprints at the crime scene, 
and has a spotless criminal record, yet Tony is convinced that Ray is the culprit. The two confront him and invite him to the police station. On their journey, Bobby inquires if Ray recognizes the vehicle they're in and the driver, to which Ray admits he's unaware. Tony, who is visibly upset, turns around and looks at him. He brings up the actions of his friends and Tony's wife and daughter. Ray dismisses Tony's accusations, calling him insane. Bobby handcuffs Ray and takes him to the trailer where Ray and his crew attacked Tony's wife and daughter. Tony requests Ray to recount the events of that night in detail, to which Ray attempts to deny any involvement. Tony becomes enraged and strikes Ray. Transition to the period when Susan and Edward were still in a relationship. Susan is reviewing a manuscript by Edward and expresses her dissatisfaction suggesting it lacks quality. She encourages him to pursue a different career path. Edward feels offended, and Susan clarifies her desire for realism, arguing that his current work is not promising. Edward accuses Susan of sounding like her mother, and a dispute ensues. Moving forward, Susan encounters Hutton, who will become her future spouse. Returning to the book, Bobby contacts Tony to inform him that Ray has been set free due to the absence of solid proof against him. At a diner, Bobby reveals to Tony that he has been diagnosed with lung cancer and has only a year to live. He's been requested to step down, but Bobby is resolute in assisting Tony to ensure justice is served and that the perpetrators are held accountable, even if it means bending the rules. This case will mark Bobby's final assignment, and he cannot simply observe as a killer walks free. Take a moment to remember the scene when Susan is on the verge of ending her relationship with Edward. She explains to him that their bond isn't strong because of their stark differences. Edward pleads with her not to end things, but Susan insists she desires a brighter future for herself and is dissatisfied with their current situation. In the story, Bobby apprehends Ray at the bar and takes him to his base. Ray argues that his arrest is unlawful due to the lack of proof but Bobby dismisses his concerns. A short time later, a police officer brings in Lou. Bobby hands over the weapon to Tony because he's feeling sick and needs to vomit. The pair attempt to flee, but Bobby manages to take down Lou. However, Ray manages to escape. Flashback to the moment Susan is at the clinic with Hutton. She expresses her remorse for her actions and fears that Edward might discover her betrayal. It's at this moment that we learn Susan has undergone an abortion with Edward's child. Hutton comforts her assuring her that Edward will remain oblivious to the affair. A short time passes, and they witness Edward weeping by their car. This revelation leads us to understand that Edward's gentle demeanor led to the loss of his wife and child, who served as the inspiration for the protagonist in his book, Tony, whose gentle nature also resulted in the loss of his wife and daughter. Returning to the story, upon seeing Lou's death, Tony cries out and he begins to feel the weight of regret for not fighting harder to save his family. Bobby offers support, reminding him of his good qualities. He urges him to rise, explaining they need to pursue Ray and that they will part ways. Tony enters the trailer home and spots Ray, who fires a warning shot at him. Ray teases him, believing Tony lacks the strength to retaliate. He then admits to attacking Tony's wife and daughter, claiming it was enjoyable. When Ray suggests he's powerless to intervene, Tony shoots him, but before he falls, Ray manages to strike him with a crowbar. Upon waking, we observe Tony injured in the eye, struggling to escape. He blindly strikes Ray, who is motionless on the ground. Outside, Tony trips and accidentally drops his gun. He's gasping for air, barely able to breathe until he passes away. Susan is in the bathroom, thinking about Edward. While lying in bed, she gets an email from him, inquiring about their next meeting place and time. The following day, Susan gets ready, removes her ring, and beams with anticipation of seeing her former spouse. She gets to the eatery and stands there for what seems like an eternity, but Edward fails to appear. Susan weeps as she thinks about the awful decision she made that brought her to a crumbling relationship and a life filled with sorrow, and the film concludes.